Hello everybody, I'm Miss Nevin and welcome back to another art club. So this week we are going to be doing wire sculptures and you've got the option to cover them to kind of bulk them out a little bit if you like. So I'll show you my half finished one. I'll hold this up just so that you can see it a bit more clearly. Okay, so it's a man sitting down and he's made of wire and then I've covered parts of him, it will be all of him, in uh, two different, using two different techniques. So the top bit um, uses kitchen roll or toilet paper and PVA glue. That's a really good one if you have PVA glue. If you don't have PVA glue, um, masking tape is also quite a good option. Okay, so this one is done with masking tape. This one is done with kitchen roll uh, slash toilet paper. Um, so last week I was really, really happy and impressed with how many people um, asked me questions online and um, some people sent in uh, pictures of what they made. So I'm going to go through those now because it's really exciting um, to show you what they did. Okay, so these are both absolutely fantastic. Um, both individual, both their own designs, which is really, really good. So in the first one, um, I think it's really nice that the student has uh, used a branch to actually make the circular shape for them to then build their loo roll pieces onto. And in the second one, they've made their own design. And I think I can see that they used um, sellotape to join the pieces together instead of staples or a glue gun, which is really, really good because they're using what they've got. So well done guys, um, if you, uh, sent in your pictures. If you didn't send in your pictures, um, it would be really good to see what you've made. So I know that quite a few of you have tried this because um, you've been emailing me about it. Um, it would be really, really good to be able to see what you've made and I can share it again on uh, next week's video. On to the wire sculptures. So these are two examples from the internet that I found of how you could do different uh, wire sculptures. So the first one is quite complex. They've used a lot of wire there and they've wrapped it around loads and loads of times to kind of bulk out um, the figure, which is really cool. So that one looks really, really good. And because it's so um, kind of anatomically correct, I don't think it even needs to be covered doesn't need the tissue paper on it. It looks good by itself. Um, the second picture um, is a much kind of simpler design, but sometimes simple things can be really, really nice. And I actually really, really like the simplicity of these two sculptures. I especially like how they have included um, a way of making the figure stand up in the design. So uh, you can probably see that uh, coming out of the shoulders in one of them is a um, like stick of the wire that they've used and that is kind of acting as a stand for them. So that is really, really good as well. So um, you can also cover your wire sculptures. So the ones on the left, they've been covered in kind of paper mache. So that is PVA glue, water and uh, paper basically. Um, and they've used paper to bulk it out and that looks really, really good. Um, on the right hand side, there is kind of a staged process to show you how they have made their sculpture. And they have done a very simple wire frame to start with. It looks like it's been taped together as well. Then they've gone over it uh, in, um, I'm pretty sure that is paper mache or something. Um, and then they've painted it afterwards, which you could do. So uh, the things that you will need, uh, so everyone, no matter what kind of sculpture you're doing, you are going to need pliers with a cutter or wire cutters. So the things that I have here are these, they are wire cutters. You need something like that to cut the wire. Um, next up, you obviously need wire. So this is the wire that I am using. Um, it is craft wire, but if you don't have any craft wire, you can quite easily get from garden centres or online um, garden wire, which is used to um, string up plants. 
okay? It's like to hold plants against the fence. Um, so garden wire, you can quite easily access it and it should be about three pounds for loads and loads and loads of it. So it's nice and cheap. Um, if you're happy just to leave it as a, a wire sculpture, that is all you need. If you would like to cover the sculpture, you will also need one of these two options. So the first option is toilet roll or kitchen roll. So that is something quite nice and absorbent um, and PVA glue. So on my one, which I'm gonna talk you through in a second, that is how I made this one. I would recommend using this um, as you can make it the right shape more easily. If you don't have any PVA glue, uh, you can use masking tape. So that is tape that looks like this, not sellotape, it's masking tape, and it's kind of like paper, so you can rip it just with your fingers like that. Okay, um, if you're doing the masking tape one, you will probably want to cover it at the end to make it look a bit neater uh, with newspaper or colored paper. And you'll also need a glue stick in order to add that newspaper or coloured paper. Now that you have your equipment, uh, you can start with the design. So I chose these two images because they show you how uh, the pose of the figure can really make it kind of come alive. So um, I would say choose some choose a pose that's nice and interesting rather than just a straight up standing figure because it makes you look at it more, it makes it a much more interesting thing, it gives it a kind of playfulness and it makes it more of a character. So uh, the ones on the left are they use wire to climb up the wall, which might be a nice idea, and you might want to um, hang it off a nail on the wall or something. Um, on the right hand side, that is different and they've really thought about the space that their sculptures are going in and they have made the pose uh, fit the space that they're in. So I kind of took inspiration from that one by having my little person sitting down. So they are going to go on a shelf. Okay, so that might be a good idea. Um, when you're planning your sculpture, you need to find one reference image at least. Uh, more from different angles would be better. Um, and that is what you're going to look at uh, so that you have something to guide you when you're making your sculpture. Um, you need your, your person to be in a stable pose so that they can stay in the right position by themselves. Okay, so um, if you want your person to be standing up, you might want to have a wire bit coming out of the back so that it has like three points of contact on the floor. Um, or it's probably easier if you choose a sitting down pose or lying down pose as uh, they are gonna be a lot more stable. So uh, the third thing that you need to think about is where is your sculpture going to go? So if it's on a shelf, how is it going to sit on that shelf? Is it going to hang over the edge like my one? Um, yeah, think about where it's going um, and therefore which pose you need to choose. Now I'm moving on to how to actually make your uh, wire frame. So if you're only doing wire, this is all that you need to know. If you are, um, adding to your wireframe, then you can carry on and watch the rest of the video. So uh, first things first is I've just wrapped some of this wire around my fingers a few times so that it becomes more strong, okay? And this is going to be the back, so the spine of my figure. Now, when I take, sorry, the um, camera's a little bit delayed, but when I take my fingers out of there, all of the wire kind of comes apart a little bit. So to give it more strength as well, you squish it together and then twist it. It becomes a lot, lot stronger. 
in fact, so strong, I can't really push it down properly. Okay, so because this is too strong for me to twist very well, I'm just going to take this one bit of wire that's still attached to the rest of the reel. And I am just going to go round like that to bring all of the wire together so that that is a nice strong base for us to start off with. Okay, so now it looks like this. Okay, so that is the spinal cord, which I think is a really good place to start because that is the center of the body, which everything else can now come from. Uh, you want to aim to do the whole sculpture in one piece of wire because uh, it will make it stronger and it's really, really difficult to attach different bits of wire. For example, if you wanted to attach, to attach one arm, it's really, really hard to do that without it kind of flopping around. So try and do it all in one piece of wire. So the next thing is you have to choose shoulders and arms or legs next. So I'm going to do legs next. I've come to this page, um, which is quite handy because it tells you the proportions of the body. So this is what you need uh, to know when you are making each of the limbs. OK, so because I'm making a leg, you can see on the screen that the leg length is the same as uh, the length from the top of the head to the hip. On my one, I know that this is the length of the spine. And so the head and the neck will probably be about here. So I haven't measured it. You can measure it if you like using that diagram that was on the screen. Um, but I know that it's just a tiny bit more than the spine. So I'm going to measure this bit of wire against there, make a bend where I think the top of the head will be. And that gives me the length of the leg. Okay, so I can now bend this leg into whatever shape I like. It's probably easier if I show you like that. Let's have a look. Ooh. So this is the length of the spine. I've got it using the same piece of wire coming into the length of this leg, which I can now manipulate into a seated position. Okay. So uh, next, I can go around the leg with the wire to reinforce it, to make it a bit stronger. And also, I need some of this wire that I've got in a big length um, to come down so that I can put the foot in, okay? Because the foot did not count as part of the length of the leg. So I'm going to put this wire around the leg, partly to strengthen it and partly so I have got something to put uh, the foot onto. So I'm gonna put that around there. And make a kind of a foot shape with the wire. Okay. So so far, I've got spine, leg, and foot. Okay, so I'm not going to show you me making the other leg, but I'm sure you can guess that I would bring the wire up here again, along, measure it so that I know how long it needs to be, fold it down again, just like I did with this one, and then make the foot just how I did with this one. Okay, so that is how to do spine and legs. The next thing that we are going to make are the arms. So uh, from this diagram, we can see that the arm length is the shoulder to hip length. So that is the exact length 
of the spine that we have already made. So to do the arms, we need to now bring the wire from the bottom of the back, back up, more towards the top. You might want to wrap it around this bit of the top a few times so that your arm is going to come out of the top of the spine. Okay, so um, first of all, you need to decide where your shoulders are going to be. As a guide, um, it's good to know that your shoulder width, so from shoulder to shoulder, is the same length as two of your head. So if I had my head on the side, it would be two of my head would equal the distance between my shoulders. So we can't really measure that right now because we don't have a head on this. However, um, you can kind of guess. So I think the head on my one will be roughly this big. Therefore, my shoulder would end there. So I'm going to make it kink there. And that is one of my shoulders. Okay, so I now know uh, from looking that my uh, arm length is the same as the spine length because it is from hip to shoulder. So from there to down to there, can you see that that's the same? From there to there is the same as from there to there. So that is the length of my arm. So I'm going to do a nice kink there. And then the hand is a little tiny bit longer. So I'm just going to add it on about that much. So I'm going to make a kink there for the hand. Okay. Okay, so I've got, let's see, so you can see. Okay, so I've got a kink for the hand, a kink for the wrist all the way up the arm to the shoulder. So I can now bend that in the middle of the arm to create the elbow. Can you see that? And then I am just going to wrap the wire around the arm that I've already made to strengthen it a bit. And also to bring this end of the wire back up the arm to here so that I can do the next shoulder. So I'm going to do that now and pause the video. As I was doing that, I actually ran out of wire. So my wire stops here. Um, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how to attach um, a new piece of wire firmly um, in case so I've got my new piece of wire here. I need to get some somewhere solid uh, where I can wrap this around without it coming undone. So I think the best place for my one is I'm going to go through the middle of this bit first. And then wrap that end around like that, just so that it has something uh, to like kind of hook onto. Then I'm going to wrap it around this top bit a few times to make sure that it is secure. Okay. When you feel that it doesn't kind of wobble anymore, you are okay and it should be attached quite firmly. So mine's gone around a few times. Now it's attached quite firmly. I am going to do this other arm now. So I did start it with the other end of the wire, but I'm just going to go around that, partly to strengthen it, partly so that I can continue on with the arm. Okay, so I need to remember that this arm also needs to be the same length as the spine. So that is down to there. I'm going to make a kink. I'm actually going to do it a bit differently to the other one. Oh no, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to do it the same. 
Uh, make another kink for uh, the hand. So I've got shoulder, arm length all the way down to here. Kink, which is the wrist up to the end of the hand and just fold this over so that that is the end of the hand. And then I'm going to wrap this wire that I have over here. I'm going to wrap this wire back up the arm along the shoulder to where the head and the neck needs to be um, so that I can get there with the same piece of wire. I'm going to do that now uh, and I'm going to pause the video so that you can uh, don't have to just watch me do it. <laughs> Okay, so I've got it up to the stage where I have got my wire coming out of here. Okay, so it's kind of around the neck kind of area. So the next thing I do need to do is make a neck. So what I think would be the strongest is if I wrap this bit of wire that's going to be the neck around this part a few times just to get it strong and coming out of roughly the right place. So that now goes upwards like that. Okay. I'm now going to make the head shape. So I know that two heads fit into the shoulders. So that means one head must be that big. So let's have a look on there. So that means I need to make a kink in the wire here. So I know that that is the top of the head. I'm going to re-measure it so that I know where the bottom of the head is. Okay, so I'm going to make another kink here where the bottom of the head is. Okay, so it looks a bit silly right now, but I'm now just going to keep wrapping around to make a head shape there now that I know where the top and the bottom is. Okay so because I am going to be wrapping my sculpture I don't need to do any more than that for the head as this is just kind of a base to, to uh, give the sculpture strength when I put the paper on it. If you are only doing a wire sculpture, you will now need to build up uh, that head shape by wrapping round the wire multiple times, okay? Once you've wrapped the wire around a good few times, you need to bring it back down so you can have the other side of the neck. I'm gonna put mine in there, wrap it around. Give it some strength. Oh, I'm going to do it around this way, actually. I can feel that it's not quite strong enough, only going over there. OK. Wrap it around again, because I can feel that it's not quite strong enough. OK. Put that back into the right place. This is my wire base. I think that is finished now. So I'm going to cut the excess wire off with my wire cutters. And there we go. So that is my wire sculpture so far. And um, now is the time to bend it into the pose that you like. So in my one, I've looked at the reference image. And I've noticed that the man's back is quite hunched over, so much so that his elbows can sit on his knees when he's sitting down. So that is quite a big curve in the spine of my sculpture. However, his head is actually pointing upwards a bit, so I can move the head upwards. Yeah, you're basically just looking at your reference image and putting the sculpture into whatever position it needs to be in.
just so that you can see the kind of 3D effect of my sculpture, I'm going to show you it turning round a bit so you can see how I have positioned my one. Okay, so because he's sitting on a shelf, I've done his legs at um, an angle so that it's okay when he sits on the shelf. Uh, I've moved his head a little bit because it was going a bit weird. But yeah, that is what my one looks like. You are all now ready for wrapping your sculpture. So this is going to um, make the body look a bit more full, look more like a human being rather than just a kind of skeleton puppet thing. Okay, so you need to, first of all, rip up all of your kitchen roll or toilet paper um, into strips, as this is gonna be easier. Um, the PVA glue, kitchen paper toilet roll version is what I'm going to show you first. Okay, so you need to get a strip of kitchen roll or toilet paper. Okay, that one's a bit fat at the top. I'm just gonna make that a bit thinner. Um, I'm gonna show you this on the arm first. Okay, so number one is put a fair bit of PVA glue onto the wire. It might drip off, but you can catch it with this strip that you are putting on. Okay, so you are just bending it round. If you're bending it round and it's not going to stick because the glue hasn't seeped through yet, you can put a little dab of glue back on there and wrap this round, okay? When you're wrapping, don't just wrap all in the same place, keeping going around exactly the same place. You want to move it on a bit. So I'm gonna put a blob over here so it can go up the neck a little bit more and move that wrapping round so that we are now going up to the neck, okay? Think about how thick the arms are. So look at your uh, reference image and think about how many times you need to wrap it around to go around the arms. Another thing you need to think about is in the arms, are there areas where there's a uh, like skinny bit, so that's probably going to be around the elbow where you've got a joint. Um, and where are there going to be fatter bits? So that might be your forearm might be a bit wider, um, or maybe like the top of your arm is probably going to be a bit wider as well. So the beauty with using the tissue paper and, toy and PVA glue option is because the glue seeps through the absorbent tissue paper, you can now kind of squish it with your fingers into a smoother shape and a better shape for you, okay? So I've managed to kind of sculpt that just using my fingers after I've already wrapped it round, okay? So you want to do that all the way down the arm and along similar to how I did this side. Okay, so you wanna to get to there, you want to put um, a bit on for the hand as well. Remember to squish in uh, where the joins are. So that will be the elbow and uh, the wrist. You don't really need to do that for the shoulder because the shoulder is quite bulky. Okay, I have gone uh, down to the elbows on my one using that technique. Um, you can go down all the way to the end of the arm and to the hand. So the next thing that is really standing out to me is that his body is teeny, teeny, tiny, and it needs to be bulked out a bit. So um, because I'm actually using paper towels, which works as well, um, I am just going to get one paper towel that looks like 
that. Fold it in half, not squidge it down too much because I quite like the air gaps. So I'm going to put it underneath, fold it up, and underneath the spine with a bit of glue on it. So a nice blob of glue there. Put the spine on the glue and then just wrap it round a bit. So this is like making the um, like torso part of his body so that he's not just a spine. I'm gonna move the ends of the hands away like that just to make it a bit easier for me. And then I can always bend them back afterwards. Don't necessarily need to glue every time you um, bring this bit of tissue round as the air gaps actually make it uh, bigger, it makes it bulkier. So I'm just gonna keep wrapping this round. And so we've got a bit more of a body. Okay, so something that I've just noticed here so this is going to be the head. These are kind of the shoulders. And now because I'm wrapping it around the spine, he's actually going to have a big bulge at the back of his spine. So I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to leave it with this bit sticking out, pull it kind of tighter so that that spine is not uh, coming out too much. There we go. So he's looking like that right now. And then actually, I'm going to roll up this end so that he's got a bit more of a belly and a chest coming more from the front rather than the back. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so I've got his spine there. I've got this big padded bit in the middle here. Okay, I'm going to bring it up a bit so that it actually forms part of his chest. Remove this arm a little bit out of the way without ripping what I've already made. And then I'm going to put, I'm just going to zoom so you can see that. Okay, I'm now going to put uh, some PVA glue on this and then wrap that with the strips just like we did before and this should hold its shape now. Okay so I'm going to do that um, without you watching just so that you don't have to sit and watch me. So I've now bulked out the torso, as you can see, just there. Um, so I think that looks pretty good. I've also managed to make the spine not look as weird and I can kind of bulk out these shoulders later so that it doesn't make the spine look too kind of bumpy. Okay, so um, if you're doing that, you are just going to be using the same technique, wrapping around strips, of a toilet roll or kitchen roll around the skeleton thinking about which bits need more wrapping around to make them fatter and which bits uh, don't need as much wrapping around to make them smaller. You can also kind of pinch these uh, joins um, to make those a bit smaller as well. Um, so if that is the technique you are doing that is all you need to watch. If, however, you are using uh, masking tape, uh, sorry, yes, masking tape, um, this example is what I did for the leg. So I used masking tape for this whole leg and foot, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so first things first is masking tape is already sticky. So that's masking tape. So you just need to. Uh, rip off a bit. It doesn't have to be in a full strip. You can just do loads and loads of little strips if you like. 
So if you have got a thin bit, for example, maybe the knee, you can just go around that by wrapping masking tape around and making sure that it's nice and tight as you do it. Um, if you come to a join, it might be easier to rip the masking tape, put that down there and start again on the other side. So starting a bit further down the join. And that is how you can do any bits that are kind of skinny. However, on this leg, the thigh is much, much fatter than the uh, corner of the knee. And I've also tried to make this leg look like he's got some calf muscles. So it comes out here with the most protruding point right here. Okay, and then it comes down again to the ankle, and then I need to put another kind of ball on there to bring the foot out a bit. Okay, so on this leg that we're doing now, I don't know how to get my man to sit. <laughs> um, you need to get a piece of masking tape and Get a nice length of it, like that, and just roll it up. So thinking about how big the muscle is that you're making. So because mine is going onto a car, um, it can be quite a kind of long muscle. So that doesn't matter that that is um, a long shape rather than a ball, which you might need to do somewhere else. For example, if you're doing shoulder muscles, you might want to have uh, more kind of ball shaped um, bits of masking tape. So with that, you can't just stick that on because it's no longer sticky. If I was to stick that to the leg there, there's nothing to stick it onto. So you need um, a short length of masking tape again. Because it's masking tape, you can just rip it. If you place this strip at, over the top of there so that you've only got one end on, this will mean that you won't um, come back on yourself when you're wrapping it round. So I'll move that just so you can see it more. So this muscle, because it's going on the back of the leg to be your calf, I'm going to just hold that on there. Just hold that on there. Wrap my masking tape around. Make sure that the muscle is feeling like it's in the right place. And then wrap this around again to secure it. So because I've uh, done the knee in not very neat way. It's a bit pointy. Can you see how the knee is a bit pointy? So I'm just going to uh, press that down a bit and use this bit of masking tape as it's already attached to kind of keep that down. I'm just going to press that over the top of there, stick it all down with my finger. And as you can see now, I've got more of a calf muscle shape um, on that leg. So because it tapers into um, a skinnier ankle, I'm just going to wrap the rest just in masking tape without making any balls of masking tape so that it kind of becomes skinnier as it goes down. Just press it into the right shape with your fingers and then secure it with the masking tape over the top. All the way down to the ankle. Okay, and can you see how that now tapers down from the calf to the ankle. So on this one, actually, I've just realized that you can't really see 
that it goes in where the knee is. So I'm just going to use the nail of my thumb to push in a bit there. There we go. And we've got more of uh, the back of the knee shape in there. OK, so if you're doing masking tape, you can either leave it like that, but there are these bits that kind of come up and uh, make it look a bit messier. So on this one that I did earlier, you can see these bits that come up and make it look a bit messier, which is where the newspaper it comes from. Okay. It's just like cut the newspaper or you can rip it into strips like this. Um, I quite like that it's got newsprint on it because it makes the final um, sculpture look like it's fully made out of newspaper. And I think that's really cool. Um, I then need a glue stick. So that is here. And I'm just going to glue these small bits of newspaper over my entire finished figure. So just literally just wrap it round, glue it on, I'm sure you know how to glue things. If you're in year seven, eight and nine, you should know how to glue things by now. And then you'll have the newsprint on the, oh, you can't really see it on the camera, but there we go. Okay, so you just always remember that you need to uh, look at your reference image so that you can see where the fat bits are of the body, where the thinner bits are of the body. Um, and yeah, just have a go. Just have a go. Remember, if there's a place where you can't quite um, get your fingers in there, you can bend the sculpture to a certain degree to make it a bit easier for you. But um, yeah, tell me how you get on, okay? Thank you very much for watching and um, hopefully you are confident enough to send me your um, outcomes this time. Um, the ones who sent me them before, they were really, really good. I was really, really impressed. So um, you've got nothing to worry about. You'll be fine. Um, yeah, thank you and I will see you next.